Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Jayati Ghosh of JNU and we will discuss the economic crisis in the Eurozone. Jayati, good to have you with us. Thank you. The Eurozone crisis seems not to be fading out. What it started as Greece now has spread over appears to be to Portugal, Italy, Ireland and now even Spain is being talked about as a possible long-term defaulter. So what's really happening in the Eurozone? Well, in a sense, this was to be expected. It's not really a surprise because if you remember when the crisis first hit Greece, people were already talking about the pigs, that is Portugal, yeah. Ireland, Italy, Greece and Spain. And the reason is because these are all countries that actually had a deficit on their current account. And some of them had a fiscal deficit, some of them it was a private sector deficit, but all of them were therefore seen to be vulnerable. The problem is that it's really a, a peculiar crisis today because in, at one level it is fundamentally an imbalance between, if you like, the stronger, more stable countries in the area like Germany compared to the weaker southern states that happens, like Ireland is northern but the others are mainly southern states, uh, which has stemmed from the fact that they're tied to a common currency. And so the weaker states cannot now devalue and somehow resolve the problem that way. The imbalance cannot be resolved by a devaluation. But this is being compounded by the fact that governments today are reacting with a knee-jerk kind of response to the markets and thereby making things worse. And then when they do that, then the markets say, oh my goodness, things are worse. And then they put further pressure. And then the governments react once again. So is this all a sort of bad economic theory playing itself out? Yes. Or is it also that there are certain kind of forces which stand to gain from this? Well, in any crisis, there are those who gain. And of course, there will be some speculators who will have bet their money on the collapse and who will be successful because this is not a stable situation. But I think that's really the symptom rather than the cause or the effect of this real crisis. I think there are two issues here. One is, as I mentioned, the fundamental imbalance. And this was a problem when they entered the Eurozone. They should have known that this is happening. I believe the founders of the Eurozone knew it. Helmut Kohl was on record saying we have to have political union that we can't do this unless we get closer and closer. He and other founders of the European Union in that sense, the, the Eurozone, actually believed that getting together economically would force the political union. This didn't happen, okay? But along with that, there is bad economic policy. When I say bad economic policy, I mean the belief that so many governments in the region seem to have that cutting down in a period of recession is going to give you more growth. Now, that cannot happen. And if all of you cut down, that's going to give you even lower growth, and that will actually make your budget deficits worse, not better. It also means that they can't really, in the long term, get out of the crisis because the economies will deflate. That's the whole problem. You see, look at what is being asked of Greece. In the middle of what is already the worst downswing that they have experienced for the last 50 years, they are being asked to cut by 30% their budget. They are being told, workers are being told that don't expect real wage increases for the next 15 years. Um, Self-employed people are being told, expect your businesses to close for the next 15 years. First of all, it's politically unsustainable, but obviously in such a situation, government tax revenues will keep falling and it will be harder and harder for the government to not have a deficit. So does it really mean that, for instance, this one trillion dollar supposed uh, offer that has been made to shore up the debts of these countries, that one trillion dollar really hasn't helped at all? Well, it wasn't an actual transfer of a one trillion dollar. It was a notional thing. It was a credit line. It was basically the European Commercial Central Bank telling private banks across the region, if you're in deep distress, we will bail you out. We have a credit line ready for you. Now, uh, the markets aren't buying it. That's basically the problem. And the markets aren't buying it for two reasons. One is because they see this, this fundamental imbalance, which everybody could have seen if they had only looked. But the other is more peculiar. The other is that markets tell governments, oh my goodness, you have an imbalance. You have to cut, deflate. So they cut and the governments are all rushing to then deflate to placate the markets. The minute they cut, the growth prospects worsen. And then the markets say, oh my goodness, the growth prospects are even worse. So your fiscal deficit to GDP ratio is bound to be even worse because your GDP is falling now. So then they get further anxiety and then the gov governments rush again to make further measures. Now so we have a situation where even the surplus countries, I mean Germany, which actually should be spending more, it should be tripling its budget. Germany says we're going to cut back. 
We're going to show the rest of Europe a lesson in fiscal austerity. They've gone mad, basically. <laughs> but you know, the interesting part of all this is, if you look at it, that the only way you can get out of the crisis of the Eurozone is actually dismantling the Eurozone. Now, is that something which is sort of waiting on the wings for the people to accept? Or is it something that they will face up to only under very adverse circumstances? Well, you know, strictly speaking, there are two ways out of the crisis. One way is to dismantle it. Okay? A, a set of weaker economies leaves the euro, depreciates their currency, you know, and so on and so forth. The other way is actually to have really large fiscal transfers to the regions in distress. Okay? For that, you need the political will, you need the vision, you need the commitment. Which is not going to happen. Which doesn't Germany seem to be happening. no way willing to transfer large that's resources. Right. I believe, yeah, a the different... German people will not accept, that's very This clear is the also. other point as well, that even if the leadership wanted to, it seems the people don't want to. And part of the fault of that is the media, because it's all been presented in this very bizarre way, that, that these lazy Southern Europeans, you know, these Greeks who hang around doing nothing. When you look at it, if you look at hours worked in a year, the Greeks are way ahead of the Germans. Okay, they work many, much longer hours, they have lower wages, they have higher productivity rates than the Germans. By definition, the Germans work the hardest. This is the German view of the issue. Well, it's just that they have actually had productivity increases from new technologies, which are largely proprietary. So it's really a victory of intellectual property rights in the, in the German case. They, they have very high productivity because they have all this new technology which they keep very close to their chests. And uh, they don't give workers the benefit of that. They keep it in low prices. This makes it impossible for countries where, in fact, productivity is increasing, like Greece, and where people are working hard. It's not that, you know, uh, there's this whole notion that everyone retires at 50. There's some public sector retirement at 50, but, you know, 70% of the Greece economy is self-employed. It's people working very long hours, not taking, giving themselves any breaks, not having holidays and often at, you know, relatively low wage rates. So, if we look at it, I don't think the, that the situation in Greece is going to improve at all. In, this, in the well, sense, the, there's a lot of unrest. Yes. The things are making, going to make it even worse. So, we are looking in the long term, not in the short term, long term, actually at the dismantling of the Eurozone, if it continues in this I way. I would say the medium term. Medium term. I would say within the next five years. If the political will for genuinely having large fiscal transfers does not exist, I would say within the next five years. Thanks. This has been <laughs> interesting. We'll be following this closely mm -hmm. as we mm -hmm. go along and seeing how the situation plays itself out. Thank you.